Hi everyone, welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. You can find me at heavenlybackyardastro.com or on my Facebook page, Heavenly Backyard. Now, I'm Pat Prokop. A lot of clear weather lately has given me the opportunity to use my Orion ED80T telescope. It's only a 3.1 inch telescope, but size really doesn't matter if you have the proper equipment. Uh, but right now, the Orion telescope is set up taking flats. The reason I'm doing this is I want to show off a new capture program and that program is called Nina. Is it Nina or is it Nina? Is it potato or is it potato? But let's not call the whole thing off. This is a great capture software. It does everything. Once you have it programmed to go, you can let uh, the system take care of itself and from there on out the, you, can, you can program the entire night and go to bed and get up in the morning and start doing your stacking. So let's take a look at Nina. Nina. Alright, the first thing I do is open up Nina. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, Nina. And uh, uh, you have all these different uh, selections to go from. Well, let's go with the uh, setup and go to the camera first of all. And the selection here says no camera. I go down to my uh, menu and it sees the Altair camera 294 ProTech uh, USB 2 it says because uh, I have a long length connection. Uh, so let's connect that and over here we connect and it's connecting. There it goes. Now I can set the temperature scaling here right now if I want to. Let's say um, uh, let's um, cool it down to minus 10 and then turn that on and starts cooling the camera down. Meanwhile, the next thing I want to do is connect a telescope, but I got to do something first. First thing I got to do is open up my Celestron um, uh, telescope uh, tracker, and that's right here the uh, Celestron PWI, and I should connect to the uh, telescope. And there it is. Uh, um, I love this program, by the way. Uh, it's great for all the uh, Celestron mounts, and I believe it's good for the other mounts as well. But uh, begin alignment. The system is already pointing at the North Celestial Pole, so I could say complete. And then it wants to load in a uh, previously uh, saved alignment, which I have, 8.8 uh, .8 star alignment and it's selected that. Now it wants to finish the alignment by going to a particular star. Uh, I'm in the actually testing right now in the daytime so I'm not going to be able to do that. I'll just assume we're pointing due north and uh, be good with that. So I'm going to close this or actually minimize this. Uh, so that's uh, now operating the AVX mount. So go back to uh, Nina and uh, go to the uh, telescope and there, connect to that. Uh, it says my different options right here. And there's the CPWI. Um, going to connect to that and connect. And there it says mount is connected right over me there. Now, um, also, um, if I want to, it's a good idea to connect your guider. I have it set up to connect to, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, PH. D2, and there it is right there. It popped right up. I'm going to push it over to another screen uh, on the other side of my computer. And it's all set up and ready to go. Now, see, so everything's automatic. Now, if I had a filter wheel, I could connect that. I don't have one. If I had an automatic focuser, I could connect that. I don't have one. If I have a, a rotator, I could connect that. I don't have it. But uh, anyway, and if I have a, a flat light lamp kit, I could connect that, but I don't have that either. So when I take flats, I put a white t-shirt over the front of the, the uh, telescope and then point it into a bright area of the sky. Now I'm doing this at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon for the testing. Of course, you want to do that uh, either with a flat light or uh, with a uh, somewhat bright sky. I doubled up on the covering of the telescope uh, with the white t-shirt to uh, uh, help uh, lessen the light coming in because you don't want too much light. You click on the flat wizard and uh, just let it go. Hit go. See what happens. And it starts looking around. It's adjusting for the telescope and apparently it's finding something and 
Uh, it's all handy here and it's doing its thing automatically. And let's see, I had it set to record 30 flats and it's, it's doing its thing. It's up to a two. There it is over here, down here. Right. Can you see that? Right over there. It's collecting them right now. It it's, it's, it's makes it simple. It's easy. Uh, generating flats. Um, even though the, the, the um, image looks dark here, it's not. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at one of those when it's finished. But uh, uh, it's doing its thing. Uh, it's going a little slow right now because it's so bright outside. And uh, waiting for camera. Let's see down here. Downloading. Debayering image, waiting for camera, blah, blah, blah. It's up to uh, image number nine. And it does all this stuff automatically. If, it, if it's too bright, it'll tell you either to dim the uh, light or uh, to put more um, uh, cloth over your telescope or just lower the intensity uh, somehow. Uh, the uh, uh, flat maximum exposure or flat minimum exposure. These are the values I just plugged in and it remembers that uh, once it's finished. So anyway, um, I'm going to pause the video here and let it uh, finish and then I'll come back. So hold on. Oh, I thought I was in pause. All right, I'm back. Now it's night and I can do some imaging. So let's do that. The first thing I want to do though, once the uh, system is connected, which it all has, as you have seen earlier, uh, let's go to the uh, 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 imaging and let's do a plate solving. So go click on plate solving down here and just let it rip. Now it's pointing right now at the Christmas tree nebula. So I have it set to that. I just want to make sure the telescope knows I have it set to the Christmas tree nebula. So it, it looked at it and did some plate solving and um, looks like it was successful. So let's go into the imagery over here, um, stretch it out. There it is. Um, and I do have some clouds passing through the area. And there you can see some clouds coming in as I'm trying to test the system for you. But uh, you get the idea how it works. Now, the next thing I want to do, let's go back to the um, framing. And uh, I have it all set. And uh, uh, let's load the image. There it is. And let's replace the uh, system as the uh, uh, replace as sequent target. Now, if I already had a sequent target already set and I want to add this to it, I would just say add uh, as sequence target. But anyway, I want to do this one here. And it goes right there, it is. And uh, you can see the name right here. It's already uh, automatically labeled it for me. And uh, here are the settings that I want to uh, put in. Um, actually, it's the setting it put in, which is nothing. So I'm going to go, let's you know, take um, uh, 30 images at uh, 120 seconds each. Uh, and uh, it's a light, you know, a snapshot or dark flats, lights, flats, darks. It's going to be a light image. Uh, filter, none. Now, if you had a filter wheel, you select the uh, filter that you have. For example, the quad band, I select that, the filter will automatically go to that. But I don't have a filter, automatic filter wheel on my system, so I'm just going to say, well, not, yeah, none. That's what I have. Uh, the binning is one by one. I'm going to turn the dither on. Nice thing about this program is it will dither. I wish SharpCap could dither in the uh, regular mode. Let's dither every other frame. Uh, I'm going to set the gain at 900 on this. It seems to work for my camera and offset of 50. You'll have to play with these numbers uh, for your own system. Anyway, that's all set. Click on the go and there she goes. It says the camera is at zero degrees, uh, temperature minus 10. Uh, it's waiting. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm testing this. Um, and it says my filter wheel is not connected either, but um, that's okay. I don't have one. Let me there to connect. It gives you the warning though to let you know that uh, those systems are, are available and uh, you didn't have them set. But that's okay. It lets you know. Now we're uh, taking an image. There it is. 12 seconds, 13, 14. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop this until about the end of the uh, picture and then we'll take a look at the picture itself. So I'm going to hit a pause at the moment. 
All right, I'm back. It's just about up to two minutes. There it goes two minutes. I had some clouds passing by, so I fear what this picture is going to look like. Let's go into the uh, imaging, which is this uh, little icon over here. Click on that, and there's the picture itself. Um, again, a lot of noise in the camera, which I, I didn't really clean the camera well enough. Flats would take those out, though. And you saw the flat um, uh, uh, system wizard working earlier. Uh, anyway, that's the picture. Now, the other night, the sky was perfectly clear. And I took some pictures of the uh, Christmas tree nebula and uh, <laughs> with Nina, uh, Nina. And I was very pleased at what came out of this. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to sign off right now and say, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. And, and, and oh, I, by the way, don't forget to like my page on YouTube and to uh, click the little bell. So that lets you know that uh, when I upload a new video that you'll be notified uh, that that video has been uploaded. For any of the YouTube channels you subscribe to, click on that bell. to let you know when those uh, new videos have arrived. So again, unless you need rain, Clear skies. the oranges are ready to start picking. These are Satsuma Mandarin oranges. They're easy to peel, they're mostly seedless, and they taste like orange candy. Doesn't get better than this. <laughs> 